So it may seem funny for two lawyers to be writing a book about how to have diversity and inclusion conversations, but we actually see as much kind of continuity as rupture between the two projects. So law is really critical and there's no substitute for litigation and legislation in order to secure basic human rights. I still teach constitutional law and I'm very active on a multitude of civil rights issues. But what I've realized over time is that that law can only build a floor. In order to build above that floor, we need to be more attentive to issues of culture that often appear in this current moment as issues of conversation. And the reason I think that is because these interactions are so infinite and so infinitesimal that often there's no substitute for a good conversation. It's not just that law can't do this job, it's also that law shouldn't be doing this job because these conversations are too intimate and too fine-grained for law to capture. As Kenji mentioned, there is both rupture and continuity uh, between our work as lawyers and the work that we're doing in identity conversations. And one thing that is more of a rupture in this work is that we're taking this out of the adversarial arena that the law is so often engaged in, where people are at each other's throats fighting in litigation, and we're trying to bring a more compassionate approach to these conversations so that people are able to engage empathetically. So specifically, we find that people are so terrified of saying the wrong thing in these conversations that all they really want are practical and shame-free tools for how to have them more effectively. And so we want to give them those practical and shame-free tools, and we also want to inspire them to do good in their local communities with the tools that we have to offer in the book.